In this series of videos, I'm going to teach you how to buy and sell cryptocurrency and what is even more important, how to protect yourself from the mistakes of losing your funds. Hi, my name is Alexey Konosevich and this is not financial advice, but a survival guide into the world of crypto. What is cryptocurrency? Cryptocurrency is digital cash that has no central authority that controls it. You ask no one's permission to install a crypto wallet, no one can close your account, and you can commit peer-to-peer -peer transactions with your crypto, meaning that no financial institution like a bank is required to facilitate your transaction. Instead, there is a distributed network of independent nodes worldwide who compete with each other in so-called mining. Mining is a process of collecting pending transactions in blocks and doing some computational tasks to validate these transactions and disseminate the block to the network. Once a miner completes it, they record their award um, in this block and connect a new block to the previous one, creating a chain of blocks cryptographically connected. Cryptocurrency is not created from nothing. It is a reward in a competition of miners who share their computational resources and profit from it. The copy of the ledger, this is how the blockchain database is called, is stored in every crypto wallet. Blockchain is transparent, as anyone can see the whole history of transactions from the very first block. The price of cryptocurrency depends on demand and supply. It is so important to understand for future investors that there are no legal obligations behind cryptocurrency. No one owns anything to you in a blockchain network. If you acquired cryptocurrency, it doesn't create obligations to anyone. And specifically, it means no one has to give you anything in exchange. Well, except one country in the world, uh, El Salvador, where Bitcoin is recognized as an official payment currency, legal tender. So, how can you get cryptocurrency? The first option is to create or mine cryptocurrency. By the way, the initial blockchain consensus protocol, consensus protocol in simple terms means how nodes synchronize. It is called proof of work. For that, you need expensive specialized com computers. Mining is not the only way to create coins though. Nowadays, there are plenty of cryptocurrencies with alternative consensus protocols. Another popular protocol is proof of stake. You don't need intense computational resources, but any regular computer within this protocol. And mining here look more like a lottery. As many tickets, coins you bought and stake, um, you have more chances for winning the race, completing the next block in the chain of blocks. But on the contrary to lottery in staking, you don't lose. Coins stay with you. By the way, besides staking, it is called forging and minting. Different networks invent their own names for these. Bitcoin uses proof-of-work consensus. Ethereum is on proof-of-work as well, but is going to switch to proof-of-stake. Another way to get coins is to buy them. In case of getting coins from staking, you need to buy them first as well, as you have nothing to stake. A simple way to buy crypto is to get an account on a cryptocurrency exchange. Transfer some cash from your bank account and buy coins. Which exchange to choose? You don't want to use shady exchanges. First of all, begin with Google searching the most popular exchanges in your country. Search if this exchange has got a license if it is required in your jurisdiction. On CoinMarketCap, you can find ratings of crypto exchanges. It doesn't necessarily match the list of popular exchanges in your country. Once you created your online account, the next thing you need to do is to verify your identity. In most of the exchanges, if you don't pass through KYC, know your client or know your customer procedure, you will be limited in how much you can invest and withdraw. 
it will take time so don't expect to start trading in five minutes however if you want to feel a taste of crypto you can try to buy it with a bank card on a private crypto exchange not like a trading platform but just a website that offers you a fixed rate usually higher than on a trading platform try to search on local bitcoins there are plenty of instant exchanges out there if you want a long-term strategy and a substantial amount to buy in mind then your best choice is an exchange training platform typically the exchange will want you to upload a copy of your passport driver license maybe some other documents perhaps bills to prove your address and also they will ask you to write your name and legal consent on paper and hold your passport with this paper to take a selfie photo of yourself some exchanges can even give you a call and an operator will ask you some questions to identify you let me show you an example with the Binance exchange I'm not being sponsored by this crypto exchange I just use it myself as well as a dozen other crypto exchanges you click on identity verification and go through at least the proposed level of identification following the instructions on the website once you're verified it is time to send some cash on the exchange there are normally two ways of doing this one is a card payment visa or mastercard the other way is a direct bank payment. The second one is preferred because you will have no trouble withdrawing your money once you sell your crypto. The drawback, on the contrary, to a card payment, which is instant, direct transfer might take some time. Therefore, follow the website instructions on how first to bind your account to your exchange account and then deposit. In some cases, the exchange will require to do a test transaction first by sending, for instance, $1 back and forth. Once it's done, you can buy and sell crypto assets. Pay attention to the exchange pairs. If you deposit it in your local currency, say I'm investing in Australian dollars, surely I cannot trade in pairs that have no Australian dollars. It can limit your choice. But it's not a problem. First, you can find a pair of the Australian dollar to a popular stable coin. For example, uh, as you see on the website, Australian dollars USDT. Once you exchange your Australian dollars to United States dollars tether, you will have a wider range of trading pairs with USDT than in your local currency. But for most beginners having Mm, Australian dollars versus Bitcoin, Australian dollars, Ethereum, pairs or with your local currency will be more than enough. You don't want to invest in the scam and shit coins, right? Right? If you're a beginner, you don't need to know all the tricks of trading. You just need to buy it. The crypto exchange is not selling you anything. It is a trading platform. Users trade with each other and the price you see is only an indicator of the current average. You can put your ticket for selling and buying any crypto for your own price, but it is more for pro, for traders. There is a chance you will make mistakes if you don't know for sure what you're doing. I myself usually just choose market price. And the system will find the best exchange rate for the money I want to spend. It is a safe strategy. Many beginners think that they have to buy at least one Bitcoin. No, Bitcoin has eight decimals. You can buy any fraction of it for the money you have. The best strategy for a beginner is to buy and hold or hodl. This is how it is called in the crypto industry. It's a funny story how this word appeared. I will make a video about it if you support me with your like and write some comments below. I'm not giving you investment advice, but holding is common sense. If you are not a trader, trading becomes gambling if done by non-professionals. More likely, you don't know all the intricacies of technical analysis. You don't know how to manage financial risks, cyber threats. 
You don't know how to manage your emotions. And more likely, you will lose your money. The most stupid mistake people make, I did it myself, is that you buy crypto and from this day you are constantly checking the exchange rate. It is a widespread scenario how people lose money. You buy cryptocurrency, then the price drops. In the short run, it can fluctuate dramatically. The price drops, you panic and sell it and you lose. If the price goes up, you will feel stupid because you panicked and sold it. If the price goes down, sometimes it can take months or even years to go up again. Unless you bought the shitcoin. I hope you didn't, right? How you check if any particular coin is worth buying or not? Find coin market cap and check their ratings. Look at the chart of Bitcoin. This is a good illustration of what I said. For example, if you bought one Bitcoin at the end of 2016 for 20,000, in the next couple of years, you would see the price as low as 3,500 US dollars. But in 2021, your investment would triple. Surely, if you didn't panic and sell everything during the crypto winter of 2017, 2019. And the last topic today is withdrawal. When you need to get your cash back, you sell your coins and then send them to your bank account. You won't be able to send cash to someone's account. And you have to remember about withdrawal fees of your exchange. On the most popular crypto exchanges, the commission can be substantial. I saw a fee as high as $50 per withdrawal. So first, before opening an account, consider this carefully. If you need to withdraw smaller amounts, try to find exchanges with smaller fees. Some exchanges don't have withdrawal commission at all, because exchanges earn their commissions on every executed trading order. Normal exchanges don't have commissions on deposits, but also check it for hand. That's it for today. Next time I will explain why you don't want to keep substantial amounts of crypto assets on a crypto exchange and you need to have your own protected coin storage, a software wallet or a hardware device. I will also talk about cybersecurity. I will explain why you always want to enable two-factor or even multi-factor authentication protocol on your exchange account. This is absolutely crucial. If you didn't enable it, consider you lost your coins. Keep this simple rule in mind and follow part 2 where I explain why.